Hello to my students in social psychology. So we are down to our last topic, which is on helping and compassion. I believe this is a very fitting topic to cap off our semester. At the same time, um, for this season, Christmas season, the season of giving. Um, yeah, so I'm so excited for you to learn what's in store in helping and compassion and also to do your final work. Don't worry, it won't be so heavy for you. Um, but I just hope that you will discover something as you go through this activity. Okay. So, people say that human nature is selfish and aggressive. Actually, there have been researches that would prove that to be true. Um, human nature is selfish and aggressive. And if you can imagine... Uh, somebody being threatened, somebody um, challenged, somebody uh, who's struggling, you would really think that human nature is selfish and aggressive by nature. One time, um, I had a friend who looked really glum, really sad, and she said she just realized that mankind is selfish by nature, and it's really sad. Like she said, um, I'm talking to you. I'm here as your friend. I help you because I feel that you will help me in the future. I will get something in return. Thinking about that, um, she did make a point, right? Human nature is selfish in some sense. Aggressive maybe because of um, survival. So we have this um, statement to each his own. Labaw na kung magkinalisod na ang panahon, ah, maingon na rin tag kanya-kanya na. To each his own. Wala na, hindi na ito magunahunag uban. Unahon sa nato itong kaugalingon. Okay? And sometimes, we use this term from uh, Charles Darwin, survival of the fittest, in his theory of evolution. But actually, in Charles Darwin's book, uh, survival of the fittest does not refer at all to selfishness or to human nature's selfish tendencies. So according to, to Charles Darwin, if the misery of our poor be caused not by the loss of nature, but by our institutions, great is our sin. So let's take a look at um, some situations in our society. This is an image taken in Nepal uh, in one of their scrapyards. So you will see there a brother uh, carrying his younger brother, his sibling, in a scrapyard. Probably hungry, probably desolate. We don't know what's the cause of um, the sadness in their faces, the tears in their faces. We see, or I'm not sure if you're familiar uh, to this situation in Africa. So some people actually gather mud, dry them under the sun, and they eat it like cookies because there's nothing to eat. And they do that just to fill their stomachs. What nutrition do they get from there? We don't know if there's actually any. Let's not go so far. We have our slums in the Philippines. A percentage, a huge percentage of our youth are undernourished or malnourished. So, do you think that is caused by nature? Or is it the failings of our institutions? Pointing out, great is our sin. We see people with abundance of food. We see people um, with so much resources. But then... We also see the stark difference um, when we look at our poor, the very limited resources that they get, and yet there's abundance in society. So survival of the fittest really, according to Charles Darwin, is not, that should be caused by nature and not by our human institutions or societal institutions. So... Studies, no doubt, suggest that humans have a propensity for self-interest. We just think about what we'll get from something. Okay, what do I get from this? But researchers have also revealed that currents of generosity also run deep through us. Um, so we see that, we observe that in birds, we observe that in dogs, in bees, 
end in uh, bats. Basically, these species uh, may not survive without the help of the other. If they do, if they are not, uh, if they do not go in a pack or in a swarm or in a flock, they he they help each other, and they show generosity towards towards each other. Um, okay, so the broad occurrence of generosity across species suggests that generosity may be an evolutionary adaptation that has helped promote the survival of these species and our own. Basically, those who do not have generosity wired in their genes are more, um, have, no, have more possibility of going extinct than not. Think about it. How does that apply to humans? So let's look, take a look at the marmoset monkeys. Um, researchers have found out that marmoset monkeys spontaneously give something like food to other um, monkeys that are not related to them. Just a random act of kindness, of generosity. And there's an experiment involving capuchin monkeys. Basically, they gave um, a capuchin monkey with two chips. And if the monkey returns one chip, let's say an orange chip, the experimenter will, will reward the monkey. But if he returns a blue chip, the experimenter will reward him and his friend, his fellow monkey. And as based on the results of that experiment, the monkey would give the blue chip so that both of them, his, him and his fellow monkeys, get to enjoy a reward. And that there shows selflessness, so shows compassion in a sense. Okay? Genero the act of generosity, which is hardwired already in primates. So the question is, why do we help? Why do humans help? Why, how do you think that is helping us survive? So it says that humans are biologically wired for generosity and compassion. It's part of our system. But sometimes we don't nurture it and limit our capacity for it. So let's look at... Um, this picture. We can see that babies, they don't speak yet. The way to communicate is through crying. And we can see in this image, one baby is distressed. The other next to her is trying to comfort her and looking distressed himself. And the third baby is looking out to an adult, probably for comfort, because we feel what our fellow feels even as babies. If you put a baby in a room full of other babies, one baby starts to cry, it's, I'm sure that a few others will cry as well. Um, having this experience teaching in a preschool, lisud yun siya kung naan ay magsugod o hilak nga isa ka bata. Because not just, uh, because the other children will empathize towards the child. They will feel what the child is feeling. And so they will have this uneasy feeling inside them also. And as human beings, we still have that. Kaya nung ko, um, ang akong igagaw, ingon siya, kung mag-away daw kuno, kanang, kanabit ang pambansang third wheel, <laughs> kung mag-away daw kuno ang iyahang um, ate o ang iyang boyfriend, la in gido kuno ka iyang pamati, di niya masabtan, pero guot kayo ang iyahang heart. So, um, that's something I think that's natural for humans, to feel uneasy when somebody around us is feeling uneasy. So there is a word called empathy. This is our ability to recognize, understand, and share the thoughts and feelings of another, whether a person, an animal, or an animate object. Sometimes, um, katawaan na to, ang kanang mga tao nga mutan o salida, o nyo, grabe ka yung makahilak, diba? And it's just because some people have um, stronger empathy or some people empathize more than others, or some people can empathize more in a certain situation because they've been through it, because they imagine themselves through it. So, in other words, empathy is putting oneself in another's shoes. 
you feel the discomfort, you feel um, the sadness, you feel the pain because you put yourself in that shoes. Unsa ka kung ako ang nadinhang nga sitwasyon? And all humans have that. Um, so there is the social exchange theory. So it refers to our exchange of social goods, which is love, services, information, and status. So it explains that human interactions are transactions that aim to maximize one's rewards and minimize one's costs. Maningkamot daw ka nga, ang imuhang mahatag, gamay ra, pero ang return sa imuha, mas dako siya. Um, so, we use a minimax strategy. Minimize costs, maximize rewards. Sadly, muni siya ang situation sa ato ang um, business sec- most of our business sectors today. Minimize our costs, maximize our rewards. Kauban sa cost ang um, salary sa mga tao, sa iyang mga employees. So, minimize your cost, maximize your rewards para mas daghan tag profit. But, um, you talk to Karl Marx, you read Karl Marx about that, okay? Uh, I will not dwell more into that, but just injecting your past lessons, the social exchange theory. Um, we do what we do for others, expecting that we will gain something in return, and hopefully more in return. So, why do we help? Because there are internal rewards based on the social exchange theory. We help to get something in return. And what are these things that we get in return? It doesn't necessarily have uh, to be um, monetary in uh, in a sense. It can be other things. So we, we help because of satisfaction. We feel satisfied after helping. We help because we gain friendships. When you're helping other people, um, other people will like you. And so there will be a relationship. And relationships, positive relationships, are, um, I give us positive emotions. We help maybe because of adventure. We get to experience other things by helping. And some basically help just because we want the world to be a better place. Truly altruistic people just want to help, not expecting for anything in return, but because. They want the world to be a better place. And that's not just an internal reward. They're not looking for anything um, back. They just want to see the world a bit. Uh, they just want to see the world to be better. Okay. When do you help? Do you help when you're happy? Do you help when you're sad? Who do you think are the people who help more? Is it the happy people or the sad people? Ikaw sa imong kaugalingon, ano sa amang kagahelp sa others? Is it when you're happy or is it when you're sad? Let's see about that. So, um, in psychology, there is what we call feel bad, do good phenomenon. Unsa may pasabot anang, okay, unsa may pasabot anang feel bad, do good phenomenon? Um, it works when the attention, I sorry. So, feel bad, do good phenomenon is when you're feeling bad, so you start to do something good to make yourself feel better. So that's feel bad, do good. But they say it only works when the attention is on others or when we are other focused. So there was an experiment by Thompson, Cohen, and Rosenhan in 1980 where they had um, different groups enter into a room. They watched um, a short clip uh, encouraging them to place their self in a certain situation. So one group <clears throat> were made to watch um, a clip saying, uh, asking them to imagine if uh, their friend was dying. And muna yung experiences, muna ang iyahang mga kahago. Another group were made to watch a film, but instead of focusing on uh, what the friend is going through, they made the person focus on herself. So, ang, ang gipa imagine sa iyaha is ang iyahang uh, person, per, sa to? partner, or the person they're closest to is dying. And then they were asked, How do you think you would feel? How would you feel losing that person? So, the difference between the two, uh, the two sets of um, experiments, 
is that the first one, I know, sorry, the two set of participants, um, is that the first one, they focused on the pain of the other. And the second one, they focused on the pain of the person. Um, basically, on their results, 25% of those made to focus on themselves uh, show, um, returned help 25%, while those who focused on others um, helped 89% of the time and that's because they were focusing on the feeling of the other person and um, so basically feel bad do good phenomenon just works when the attention is other focused um, you think about the distress of the other you and you feel the distress because of the empathy that you're feeling okay and there is also the feel bad Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> but basically, feel bad. Sorry, I wasn't able to delete the first slide. <clears throat> basically, the feel bad, do good phenomenon does not work when the person is angry or when the negative emotion is anger and when the, uh, when the negative emotion is great grief. Uh, for example, namatay yun ang imuhang loved one. And you're you're feeling grief, uh, you have or when you're angry, these emotions tend to make you focus on your own emotion more because you need to heal from that first before you can help others. And anger naturally just deletes everything. Try ganin niyo pangayug tabang sa inyo mga mama papangagipang sapot, di ba? <laughs> when you're going to ask for um help or for a favor from a family member in your ginang timing di ba kung good mood and that's basically how it is we talk about the feel good do good phenomenon so feel good do good is a positive mood of relief that can dramatically boost helping um on some my positive mood of relief for example in an experiment by delinsky and norat uh i sorry yeah Okay, by the if you're feeling good, sorry, feel good, do good phenomenon is um, the phenomenon wherein when you're feeling good, you just tend to help out other people. Have you ever experienced feeling so happy that you just want to help everyone there who's needing help? Um, I've experienced that. diary, there's so much love in me that I just want to spread that love to others. When, when you're feeling very happy, then you want to extend yourself towards others. Um, and then, in an experiment by Delinsky and Norat in 1998, uh, they, they have seen that when a person feels relieved from something, mas taas ang chances nga mo help siya. Um, they conducted this experiment by putting murag, uh, parking tickets. We don't have that in the Philippines, pero kana murag kung dakpon bitaw ka sa police, tapos sa tagan kag ticket. Um, in, in the US, when they do that, they just put the parking tickets sa windshield. So the experimenters did that. They put um, a, what looked like a parking ticket on the windshield. And then, so pagkakita sa tao, oh my gosh, a parking ticket. Pag tanaw nila, oy, dili dahil siya parking ticket. So, there is a sense of relief. And then, they had um, a, a university student approach the person nga murag nagtuo nga na ay parking ticket and ask for help on her thesis. So, he, will be, he or she will be interviewed for 15 minutes. Interestingly, those who initially, what, those who initially thought they saw a parking ticket on their windshield helped more than those who didn't see any parking ticket on their windshield. So basically, the sense of relief makes you help others. So, sa inyo ha, imagine yung siguro ninyo, abi ninyo, ni bagsak mo sa inyong exam, ni pasar di ay mo, tas na yung din imong friend, huwag tabangi ko sa project ba? Tungod na yung kalipay mo na yun, kasigi, sigi. So, timing, timing. <laughs> timing is key. Okay. <clears throat> And then there is also what we call the reciprocity norm. So the reciprocity norm is an expectation that people will help, not hurt nor harm 
those who have helped us. So, kung mutabang ko sa iya ha, um, ga-expect ko nga tabangan ko niya balik. Dili ko niya uh, i-harm because I helped her. That's why, gani, um, when you have friends and they they betrayed you in a sense, na sila'y murag gibuhat nga nakaharm sa imuha, sakit kay siya sa imong buot because that's not the norm. That's not included in the reciprocity norm. Why did my friend return my kindness with something negative, with harm, right? So there's the reciprocity norm. So some, some of us extend help because we expect that help to be um, returned back to us. So at times, one, way, one may give more than one receives. But in the long run, the exchange should balance out. Um, I can remember, I know, I know someone who is very rich and their family likes to hold gatherings. So sila gasto tanan, dato good sila, de ba? But what do they get in return? They get the satisfaction of their relatives. They get they get the smiles. They get the positive re- regard. So reciprocity norm that does not just focus on returning exactly what is given, but it's more of returning something that's maybe of equal weight to what is given. Napoy uban. Sige, pakopyahon ta ka sa imong asa- sa akong assignment pero panglibria. <laughs> okay, that's not really helping. That's more of like um an exchange. Uh the economics of cheating. Char joke. <laughs> okay. Um do you understand the word altruism? Basically, altruism is selfishness in reverse. So, an altruistic person is concerned and helpful even without conscious regard for one's interest. Mutabang ko sa iya, dili tungod kay malipay ko, dili tungod kay nakoy makuha in return, dili tungod kay nakoy positive emotion nga ma-feel, mutabang lang ko. Okay? An example of that is the Good Samaritan. But I think we help, generally, when we help, we get a positive feeling. Okay? Natay a uh, positive emotion nga ma-feel. So, in the Good Samaritan, the guy who was robbed was left on the street and then there's a Samaritan passing by. Um, para sa mga dili familiar sa Bible, <clears throat> um, the Samaritans are considered kanang mga hugaw sa lipunan or kanang murag, murag ito kanang gamali iton sa lipunan, the marginalized sector. Murag dili kita as ang pagtanaw sa ila sa lipunan. But in the story, it was the Samaritan that chose to help the, rob, uh, the robbed person. Dili ang katong pari, dili ang katong Levi, but the Samaritan. And he did not search for anything in return. Nagtabang lang yun siya. Yang gi dala sa inn, and he even paid for um, the expenses that the inn might incur because of the uh, person's stay there. He didn't even want to... Um, Parang, he didn't want the guy to be informed who he is. And I think in society today, there are a lot of people like that. Mga anonymous givers. They don't want your appreciation. They don't want your um, positive regard. They just really want to help. And there are a lot of good Samaritans here. I've experienced a lot of that also. People helping. So there is what we call the social responsibility norm. Because Think about the Good Samaritan. It cannot be explained by the reciprocity norm. The Good Samaritan was not looking for anything in return. And the guy will never know kinsa ang nagtabang niya. So, reciprocity norm, I, Sanisha? Yeah, the reciprocity norm will not um, explain the behavior of the Good Samaritan. So, we have what we call the social responsibility norm. So it is the belief that people should help those who need help without regard to future exchanges. Gatuo ta nga kinahanglan mo tabang ta sa uba sa atong isig ka tao. Di ta maguna-una nga uh, ogma ogma pohon mo balik ra na sa ako a uh, or um, kuan ra gyud na siya kanang karma, de ba? Social responsibility norm is just really believing that it is your responsibility to show kindness compassion towards others, to help others. 
So uh, for Christians, there is um, a verse in Matthew chapter 5, verses 46 and 44. If you love those who love you, what right have you to claim any credit? I say to you, love your enemies. So kung ang imuhan ang higugmaon, katong imuhan katong mga na maka nakai ma benefit from katong mga gahatag ug kindness sa imuha sa lugar mo naman ang gabuhaton sa tanan so what credit do you have uh, to claim for uh, parang what right do you have to claim credit for that so you love those who uh, you love those who don't love you or those who cannot return your favor um, based on studies, collectivist cultures support the social responsibility norm uh, str more strongly than in the individualist West. Why is that? Because, again, collectivist cultures believe in uh, the effect of um, parang society as a whole. Um, parang collectivist societies value the whole group more than the individual self. And that uh, that's why probably social social responsibility norm is more observable. Excuse me, in collectivist cultures, but I'm not saying researchers are not saying that you do not observe this in individualist societies. It's just that it is um, more observed in these societies. Okay. However, social responsibility norm is selectively applied. How is that selective? So let's take a look at this one. <clears throat> when do we help? So you have a stimulus. Remember our discussion on um, siya perception? Kung unsa ni mo pag-perceive sa isa kabutang, ang imuhang behavior towards it, ang imong attitude about it also is affected. So you have your stimulus, a person in need of help. And you have your attribution. Asa manimo gi attribute ang iyang pagpanginahanglan sa tabang. So if you attributed it on external or the uncontrollable factors, dili ma control sa person, the tendency nga imuhang ma feel is sympathy. Maluoy ka sa iya ha. Um, and, and then ang imuhang buhaton ana would be to help the person. So say for example, if you see. Um, a child in the street, okay. Kada lang a child in the street. Your attribution is that um, ang bata dili man niya sala nga napanganak siya nga um, pobre. Dili pud niya sala nga wala siya makaon, so gapang ni siya sa dalan. So your emotion is sympathy. Maluoy ka sa iya ha, kaluoy ba sala ni niya, murag biktima siya sa iyang circumstance. So your action is to help the child. But if your attribution is internal, controllable by the person may nga nga naman sagka na ang bata naglayas-layas sa iyang balay nga ni hawak man siya sa iyang ginikanan nga nung manglimus man siya sa dalan pwede man siya mangguna there are different attributions okay there are different emotions also in response to the same to the same stimulus so the emotion there is no sympathy sala na sa bata or some, something like that okay so the action is no help is given um a social psychologist and, and sorry, as sociology students and social science students, uh, I think it's very important that you understand society really and uh, and its effects on individuals. So you know where to attribute it. When you have a situation, you can understand. Nganong ingana ang iyang situation? Is it an external factor? Nganong ingana iyang situation? Or is it internal? And what am I supposed to do with it? Okay. So let's take another example. Kaning hubog <laughs> and kaning bata nga nag-study. Who will you be compelled to help more? Naturally, kaning hubog mirisi. Nga nung inum-inum siya da, wa ka uli. There will be more people who will help the child studying here outside McDonald's because he needed, he needs, he, sorry, he needed the light. So dito siya sa gawa sa McDonald's nag-study. Naning kamot siya. Dili niya sa lang iyang circumstance. Gapaning kamot siya to surpass his situation. So there were more people actually that helped this child. Um, I think you heard about this sa news. Uh, there were people who donated an educational plan for this child. Whereas, kaning tao, nakamatan abtan siguro ni siya gaadlaw. Narasadala natulog. Okay. So, 
what do I need to know or do to help? I want you, my students, to be who you are and know that you have something to offer. Whatever um, status you have in life, whatever talents you have, whatever resources you have. Ma'am, pobrira man ko, sa lugar akong itabang. Well, think about your talents. Think about the love that you have to give. Sometimes um, people just want a hug. People just want someone to talk to. People just want a listening ear. Actually, something very important in um, in Sanasha, mental health is having a good listener. And that's something that you can offer to the world. Being a good listener. Not judgmental, just listening. Para maka-unload ang isa ka person, right? So, know that the world needs you. That's why you are here. Ganun, napamang kadiri. <laughs> okay. And when you're helping, choose to have fun. Connect with people. Connect. Um, being able to connect is, I think, one of the biggest gifts uh, as humans. We are all social beings. Connecting to other people naturally brings out joy in us. Naturally brings out happiness in us. Okay, so be aware of bystander effect. Um, there have been experiments that showed the bystander effect. What is the bystander effect? So when there are more people present, there are less chances of people helping a person in distress. Nga man, because of the diffusion of responsibility. So I'll give you an example. Na isa ka taa, na isa ka... Um, babae, she was shouting for help sa um, sulod sa iyang balay. There were a lot of neighbors that came out and looked. Nagtanaw sila kinsay mo tabang 20 minutes, ay hapadayo na nawag o na ay nanawag sa police. Why is that? None of those people in the neighborhood felt like it was their responsibility. Tinanaway ba? Kinsa may manawag? Basig siya manawag? Basig, basig ikaw manawag? Ayan, so nobody... Um, felt the responsibility to help. So there were different experiments conducted uh, that have proven bystander effect. Um, for example, there's one where she brought the participants in a room tapos kung grupo sila na sila ginaansiran nga essay tapos na aso nga musulod sa, sa room nga murag na kalayo ang kanang, there, ang kanang room with only two people inside had um more people reacting to the smoke. Nga mo inform sila nga na ay smoke compared to the uh, compared to a room full of people. Mas daghan ang mo report about the smoke. Why? Because they feel their responsibility. But because daghan ang mga tao, mo ingon din sila nga responsibilidad lugar na ako kana lugar ng uban. So, being aware of uh, the bystander effect as my students in social psychology I want you, if ever help is needed, I want you to realize what you can do and what, what you need to do in that situation. Dili kay magulat pa sa uban nga mulihok. But actually, um, research has already shown that um, with the dif diffusion of responsibility, kung daghan o crowd, and then na ay isa nga mutabang, Contagious po da yun siya. Magsunod-sunod na dayon ang uban nga mutabang og help. Okay? So, might as well be that person who will volunteer to help. Next, be sensitive to where you might be needed and do not be afraid to offer help. Some are very shy to offer help. Actually, I think medyo ano sad siya. I would understand why there are people that are shy to offer help because ang uban maulaw sila kung tanggihan sila. There was one time I was carrying like a heavy load and then I need ma'am tabangan na taka. Ay ko ay dili okay ra. Gikan cho one day sa among classmates. Wa lo gigidawat ni ma'am yang tabang. Ah sige tabangin na lang ko. <laughs> kay namula siya na ulaw siya kay wa sige wala gidawat ang iyang help. And I think some people are afraid for rejection, no? But just take it um positively. Do not take it ansana sa um, personally, nga wala gidawat imong tabang ikaw dayon ang gidenay no. It's not like that. So just be sensitive to where your help might be needed. Okay. This is something um, I truly believe in. The world is lucky to have students who chose to study about society because it's helping you understand how you can help your fellow men. It's helping you 
um, understand the situation and attribute certain things to where it should be rightfully attributed. So I hope you study well. I hope that you will apply whatever you've learned in your uh, classroom through your teachers, through the books that you've read, through the researches, because you also are lucky because you are taught to be sensitive to the needs of society. You are taught to be um, understanding of how to help uh, whatever need that you have observed. So, yeah, I hope to see more students that will offer help in society. And you must create opportunities to help. You look for opportunities for yourself to help. <clears throat> so, for example, kanilang bata si Christian. This was years ago, before pa ko nagtudlo sa BSU. I think I was 24, 25, 25 this time. Na makita ko rin siya din sa kilid sa Jollibee. Um, mang kuwad, mang limos or mag-offer ka ng limpyo sa windshield. Nga, kagamati ito yung niya. So, niya ang limpyo sa windshield. So, ako siyang gistorya. Because some people would just hate those children, no? Um, some people would just say, yeah, paying attention to them is encouraging them to be on the streets. But Christian, I wanted to know his story. Basically, Christian left their home because um, he said he was being battered and he didn't like it. He'd rather live on the streets than be hurt by a family member. Nalimta na ako kinsa to yung gingon nga um, gapasakit niya. So, nihaw, nilayas na lang siya. But, napa daw kuno siya'y auntie. O niya, kay sige daw siyang sugu-suguon. <laughs> so, dili daw siya ganaan mo puyo dito. And sometimes these children just need encouragement. These children just need people who will listen to them. Um and guide them uh, in the proper direction. So, ako siyang ginaingnan nga, puyo na lang dito sa mong auntie para makaskwila ka. Um, today, I don't see Christian anymore. Not, wala na siya din ha, sa Jollibee. I hope he's okay, and I hope he has found his way, really. But also to you guys, when you help, do not just extend help, give peace, so give one. Sometimes, um, you need to really understand the situation first. See where and how you can help. For example, for motorella drivers, especially now in the time of COVID, uh, may kaini sila mga income yun, na pay social distancing nga gina-observe, gamay rang ilang pasahero, unsaon na lang. ba? So how can you offer help? Maybe, um, kung daku-daku kag allowance, offer to um, pay a higher fare. ba? Depende lang sa inyo. Your sen where your sensitivities take you and where your capacity um uh, to what extent can you help based on your capacity too? So, I'm reminding you to be a kind giver. Um, a kind giver is responsible. So, you know the effects that you will do. Dili lang ka basta-basta muhatag o sinsilyo sa mga bata din sa dalan because that's encouraging them to stay in the streets and you don't know what accidents they might face because they're encouraged to stay in the streets. ba? Okay. So, I just want to remind you that malipay ko kung uh, mahimo mong ginghatagon, kung mahimo mong compassionate, but kindness is not niceness. So, you have to set your boundaries. When you're being kind to others, you have to set boundaries. Aha lang taman. So, be kind to yourself first because there are people that would really grab the whole arm. Kung pwede pa yung tibok lawas. Kung i-offer ni mo ang imuhang hand. So, I suggest that you learn to establish boundaries first when you offer help. Ahara man taman. Kung nanobra na siya, ay dili na, dili na. Learn to say no when it's too much already. Okay, sorry. Noon sa maning Jupiter and Venus. Okay. And make yourself receivable without expecting to be received. Mm. The social uh, the social norm. Dili ka... Um, you're not looking after reciprocity here, okay? And then, kindness is making a stand for what is right and good. What is right and good. So, it's not always what is nice, okay? Unsay insakto og unsay maayo. Okay, so let me close this uh, topic uh, with this statement, every act of kindness is never really small. Napaunta ni siya video nga kauban, pero okay na. <laughs> Ayaw na lang. Taas na kayo siya. But um, I just want to share this favorite scene. Actually, when I watched this, katong bata pa ko, um, 
nitatak na sa ako ah. Uh, the movie Pocahontas, it's one of my favorite films in Disney when, uh, growing up. I'm not sure if the others have seen this. But there is a scene where Pocahontas goes to her grandmother Willow. And grandmother Willow created a ripple on the river. And then, uh, the ripples. Tubag dahil si, ano, si John Smith. What about them? <laughs> Tubag din si grandmother Willow. So small at first. But look at how they grow. But someone has to start them. And this is applicable in helping. Feeling ni mo gamay kaayo ang imuhang act of kindness. The simple, maybe offering a food to a hungry classmate. You feel like it's a really small act of kindness, but it grows. The kindness that you've given to that friend most likely will be passed on to others. You don't know um, the extent of the help that you've given. So, just give it freely, but give it mindfully. Uh, okay, so that caps our lesson in social psychology. I hope you enjoyed our class, guys. And feel free to message me for questions or comment on our Facebook group. I'll see you again in school soon. <laughs> Bye, everyone.